What's up guys, this is Pelican Man. Uh, so if you're watching any of my content so far, I've been recording a few videos with my red-white Planeswalker control deck, Sun and Moon. I talked about how the Astrally Band affects that deck, being a Blood Moon deck. So another effect of Arkham's Astrally getting banned in modern is that I often like to play Arkham's Astrally decks because I am a big fan of artifact kind of combo-y style decks. So here's a deck that in 2016 I took to the Melbourne Grand Prix. Uh, it was a variant of this, not quite this exact list. But uh, that was during the thick of Eldrazi winter. We Going into the GP, we knew to expect a lot of Eldrazi decks and that they'd probably get banned shortly after. Um, as I go through this deck, you'll probably understand that this deck is actually pretty weak to the card Eldrazi Displacer, which I actually hadn't seen in any of the Eldrazi decks leading up to it. I actually did pretty well in the tournament, getting very close to making day two, but I got stomped because I kept reversing blue white Eldrazi during Eldrazi winter and that matchup was very very awful for me so in this deck in particular um, Arkham's Astrolabe acted as a way to bridge the gap between my aggro kind of combo main game plan and a kind of mid-range game plan which I normally wouldn't try and lean into but I have recently due to the unbanning of Stoneforge Mystic and the printing of Arkham's Astrolabe so the plan of this deck is uh, to get Quest of the Holy Relic out. Quest of the Holy, Rel Quest of the Holy Relic reads, whenever you cast a creature spell, you may put a quest counter on Quest of the Holy Relic. You can remove five quest counters from it and sacrifice such a library for any equipment, put it onto the battlefield, then attach it to a cre creature you control. So we're not interested in generating tokens or anything like that. We have to cast the creatures. So the main game plan is these zero drop creatures here in Mem Knight and Ornithopter. Fantastic vending counters on the quest. And then we've got Glinthawk here. When it hits the battlefield, you sacrifice it unless you return an artifact you control to a turner's hand. So we're aim going to try and aim to return these to hand. And then we've got Core Sky Fitch, which also does a similar thing. When it ETBs, you have to return a permanent you control to a turner's hand. So the plan is, turn one, we can play a quest. We can play any number of these that we want. So let's say we just have one. So we play a Memnite. That's one quest counter. Turn two, we play Glinhawk. Second quest counter. Bounce and replay the Memnite. Third quest counter. And then we just need another copy of Glinhawk or a Core Sky Fisher. That'll be our fourth quest counter, bouncing a Memnite or Ornithopter, recasting it for our fifth quest counter. If we have two of these zero drops, and we, we have a Glenhawk and any other one drop, we can often go off, so to speak, on turn two by playing two zero drops, playing a Glenhawk, replaying one of the zero drops, and then playing another one drop, which can even be another Glenhawk. Uh, and then the other zero drop that we didn't bounce doesn't have summoning sickness, so we can straight away get an equipment, attach it, and attack and get some good value. So the equipment we're in for here, number one is Argenta Mama. Getting this thing out for a single mana of Quest of the Holy Relic is fantastic. It gives plus six, plus six, and whenever it attacks, whenever the equipped creature attacks, destroy target permanent. This lets us block lands, important permanents for our opponent, and if nothing else, just lets us start beating in for big damage very quickly. We've also got sort of Fire and Ice. This is... So this is similar to what Astralis is doing. It's bridging between a mid-range plan and an aggressive plan because the equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and I get to deal two damage whenever the equipped creature deals combat damage to the player and draw a card. So overall, it's if I hit the opponent with the two damage, that's basically the same as giving my attacking creature plus four, plus four, or plus four, plus two, I guess. And I get to draw a card, so it feeds into a mid-range plan quite nicely. And we've also got a batter skull here, which actually doesn't work great with our quest because the way Living Weapon works, if we... Activate quest, get the batter skull. The batter skull will try to equip to the creature we're trying to equip to, but then end up actually still resolving onto the germ token that it's trying to living weapon with. But the reason batter skull is nice is because it lets us quest with no creatures in play and you still make a body. Also, it's obviously the best thing to get with a newly unbanned Stoneforge Mystic. Well, not newly at this point, but at the time of constructing this list, it was newly unbanned. Stoneforge also is more than happy to get a sword of fire and ice. Not so happy to get our Gentum Armor though. So, like I said, Glint Hawk, Ornithopter, and Mem Knight all do a great job of helping us get quest off. Skyfisher supports that as well. So to round out the, the creature base, we've got some Giver of Runes. Great at protecting our creatures. I actually used to run different swords, like I used to run sort of Light and Shadow in the main to protect from Path and Push. But now Giver of Runes does that job for us. The Raven Inspector, ever since getting printed, this card has been a house in this deck. It ETBs, makes a clue, again helps with kind of a mid-range plan if we need to lean into that. But also, if we don't happen to draw any of these boys, it gives us an artifact to bounce to play Glenhawk and just start getting in with a 2-2 flyer for one mana. 
And our last creature here is actually Marta Soul, which is a new one for Modern Horizons. This guy kind of ends up being free if we get to do some shenanigans with a bunch of our 1 and 2 drops. It also again leads into a mid-range plan because it can be a 5-4 relatively easily in this deck. If you cast it and you have no tapped lands, it gets 2 plus 1 plus 1 counts, which means quite easy to do. You know, if we get to turn 1 play like these 3 or something and turn, then turn 2 play a Marta Soul before tapping any lands. Um, and yeah, Arkham's Astrolabe filled a nice hole in the deck because it cantrips, so it often draws us into creatures that can dig us closer to our combo pieces, like our quest or our Stoneforge. We could often we could often keep hands that didn't have a lot of power but had Astrolabes. It is a nice combo with Glenhawk because we get to play the Glenhawk, bounce the Astrolabe, leap, replay it, draw another card. Same with Core Skyfisher. So that band's hurt us a little bit, but I think this deck can can recover quite nicely. Um, just quickly, the mana base. This isn't... I haven't put too much work into this mana base. Normally I have some Horizon Lands or something in here, but I'm trying a more budget build. This deck I think you can put together for 60, 70 odd dollars or something. That's Australian dollars, so for Americans and everywhere else it's a little bit cheaper than that. But all I've done here is in place of the Horizon Lands, I've just added four fetch lands just to thin our mana base a little. The mana base might need some work. We're a modern white deck, so it's relatively relatively okay for now. But without the Astrolabes, I've always struggled somewhere between 16 and 18 lands with this deck. 17 has felt like a sweet spot with the Astrolabes. So without them, we might be in a little bit of trouble. But let's see what we can do here. So we've got to get rid of these Astrolabes because they're now banned. And I'll bring the sideboard over real quick. So we're not quite sure what to do with the sideboard here. Uh, I've added a lot of cards. Normally I'm not running all these cards. Containment Priest has recently been printed into modern, so that's a card I'm excited to test out. Normally I have a nice mid-range plan to sideboard into with the Pure Steel Paladins. Um, I've also got a cheeky Colossus Hammer in here to combine with them nicely. So I think what we're going to try for today is see if these Pure Steel Paladins are good enough to, to play in the main deck here over Arkham's Astrolabes. Gives more of a mid-range plan. I think I could see wanting another land, but none of these cards really... I suppose I could, I could trim a pure steel for an 18th land, but also the Colossus Hammer being in the board is less ideal with the pure steels being in main now, but I think we'll just leave that for now because see, we've got 17 cards in here. Canonist it doesn't need to be a 4 of. I kind of considered running extra copies, but we'll leave them out for now. It gives a nice clean 15. We'll try out the full place of the priest, Containment Priest. I like the full play set of Parts of Exiles on the board for any creature combo matchups we might come up against or even mid-range decks. Uh, Fragment doesn't disenchant. This is a split that I've often run in like when I've played Mono White Death and Taxes, a lot of times playing this deck. I'm not quite sure whether I would rather the instant speed two mana effect, especially in this deck that struggles with mana, or this one mana effect, so I've just run the split and been pretty happy with it. Uh, and lastly, we've got some variety in our equipment, which helps if we're trying to play a mid-range plan with Pure Steel, is we have Sword of Feast and Famine. Pretty good in this deck, lets us untap our lands. We're often struggling for lands a little bit, so that's nice. Makes our opponent discard a card, so that can help out. Mostly it's just the protection for black and green that we're interested in for certain matchups. And Sword of War and Peace. In my current paper version of this deck, I actually have Sword of Light and Shadow here still, because I don't own a Sword of War and Peace for some reason. But Pro Red and White's fantastic, and... Being able, this kind of acts as like another Argenta Mama post board as well, because it can deal big damage, it can gain us some life against like the burn decks and stuff. So, pretty okay with that. Uh, like I said, these numbers aren't necessarily all ideal. I might want to play around with the, the numbers a bit, maybe add a land or two, maybe take some lands and take away the fetch lands. I'm not sure. So, we're going to test it as is with this current list and see how we go. So, Again, I'm relatively new to Magic Online if you've watched any of my Sun and Moon videos, so we're going to take it through the practice rooms, run five matches, and see what kind of result we can get. So stick around and join us for match number one. All right, it looks like we, we might have match number one here. So mulliganing with this deck is very important. I'm basically going to aggressively mulligan my seven. Oh, I'd love to play first, thank you. Trying to find Quest for the Holy Relic or... I was going to say Quest for the Holy Relic or... Stoneforge Mystic. This hand isn't great. The double pure seal is not ideal, but we do have a quest, so we are going to keep. This batter skull is a bit egregious, but we'll see what this hand can do. Oh, 
I think I'm actually tempted to fetch turn one just to reduce the number of lands in a deck by a little bit to hopefully increase our odds of drawing another creature. Okay. What's my opponent up to? They're hanging out of my upkeep here. All right. So Arid Mesa, fetch for basic snow-covered plains. I actually probably just need to change these to basic plains now that Astral has been banned. It's quality of life thing, right? It's fine. Play Quest for the Holy Relic and yield through the turn. Give your opponent a moment to read it. All right, and here's our opponent's turn one. They have a tapped Celestial Colonnade. That's very interesting. So I'm guessing some form of blue-white control. So these pure seals might actually have a bit of value. Ooh, a second quest. So I don't think I care too much about getting a pure seal down yet because I have two of them. So we are actually going to play the extra quest. We're going to play at our Thraven Inspector. Uh, always yes, always yield, always yes, always yes, yes I would like to use the ability, okay, we'll get a clue token from this which is also a big help if this does, it does happen to be a blue-white control deck, and we'll let our opponent have the turn back. Not the best start. I would like to see some number of zero drops or like a Glint Hawk or something here, but I think we're happy to, to to chill and just slowly play out some pure steals and hope they're good enough. We got a core sky fissure. That's that's not bad. I think we'll save it for for a zero drop if we can find one. Uh, I'm just gonna play a pure steal out here, try and force some counter magic from our opponent. Let's see if they try and counter. Doesn't matter whether they do or not, because these are cast triggers. Okay. Let's go to combat and get in for one with the Thraven Inspector. So the Pure Seal, Pure Seal Resolving is pretty nice, because we get to pop these quests. We get to draw cards regardless. Again, not great having the Battle Skull in hand, because it means that I can't... If they try and path all my creatures in response to quests going off, I can't get a creature in the battle skull, but that's fine. Also means when I two quests go off, we will have Metalcraft if we decide to hold on to this clue token. Oh, my opponent doesn't have a third land. Okay. Coming back to us. Ooh, a Martyr's Soul. That is nice. So we play this Pure Steel, hope it resolves and then get to resolve Martyr's Soul. I don't think there's anything else we really want to do with this turn, so Pure Steel. See what they want to do about this. They didn't counter the last one. I can't imagine they're countering this one. Okay, cast Martyr's Soul. Awesome. So this Skyfisher next turn is going to turn a quest for the Holy Relics online, which is fantastic. Our opponent's thinking about this one. Okay. Turn back to our opponent. And next turn, we're going to get to do some cool stuff. So the plan is, we're going to pop both quests. We're going to Get Argentum Armor and Sword of Fire and Ice. Ooh, that's pretty good. That means we don't have to bounce anything. So I am actually going to lead on Thraben Inspector. Okay. Looks like they're cool with letting that resolve. Okay. And we're going to activate this quest we're going to get our gentle mama and we'll equip to this Thraben inspector this is so that we get to draw two guards as well which is fantastic 
This is hoping to bait out any removal our opponent has on the Thraven Inspector, which is our worst creature on this board. Your opponent's thinking about these Pure Steel Paladin triggers. Yes, I would like to draw a card. Ooh. Can I play that? Oh, sorry, I've got to let this other Pure Steel Resolve. Yes. Snow-covered planes. And we'll go to combat. Okay, they're pathing Thraben Inspector, which we're fine with. We would like to get basic planes. We'll attack with these knuckleheads. All right, we will activate this quest for the Holy Relic. Get Sword of Fire and Ice, put it on the Martyr Soul because, again, we want them to remove this and not our Pure Steels. Okay, looks like they do have another path, but post combat we're going to get to re equip the Argentum Armor and the Sword of Fire and Ice. Also, we're very close to Batterskull Mana. Well, actually, this gives us Batterskull Mana, sorry. Yes, I would like to draw a card. And yes, I would like to draw a card. Ooh, another Martyr Soul. That's cool. So we get in for four. Post combat, we are going to cast Giver of Runes. And we're going to cast this Thrave Inspector. I, I'm not sure if I want to cast this Martyr's Soul because I'm worried about Supreme Verdicts coming from our opponent next turn. Maybe that's actually a reason to hold to the Serving Inspector. I think I like that. So let's uh, equip to Thraven Inspector. And we'll equip this to a pure steel paladin. The only concern is if they are splashing red and I'm worried about protecting our giver of runes. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll put on the giver runes anyway because I think I want them to potentially throw a removal at that anyway instead of pure steels because they kind of have to because if they let this untap, they're in trouble. What have they got for us now? It's a fairy time reveler, sure. That's probably going to bounce this Argentum armor. Which if we draw a land, we are just going to redeploy. Okay, otherwise we get to play this batter skull and equip it. So I think our opponent's pretty close to dead here. Land? No land, okay. We will cast a batter skull. Force of negation. All right, sure. We will equip this to the Thraben Inspector. Okay, we'll go to combat. Attack our opponent with all three. We don't really care about Teferi. So what we do want to do here, we want to hit our opponent and use the trigger to deal two damage to the Teferi. Yeah, we'll deal the two damage here. Sorry, I'm not really familiar with all of these triggers on Magic Online. We drew a Memnite, so we will just hold on to that. And pass our opponent, and we get to hold up Giver of Runes, which is nice. This should be close to a concession. They've got another Teferi, okay. Well, they need another Force Negation to count this sort of Fire and Ice on the way back down. Well, even so, we've got lethal attackers, so... Okay. Yeah, back to us. Stoneforge Mystic doesn't do anything for us, so let's cast Sword of Fire and Ice, see if they have another Force of Negation. They do not. And they concede. All right, let's go to game two. So our opponent's playing Control, so we want all of our equipment. We probably want Fragmentize and Disenchant in case they have Stony Silence, etc. Potentially don't need both. 
Um, I'm going to bring in both, I think. So against blue-white control, I often like to cut some number of these zero drops. Uh, I normally like to cut... It depends on the matchup. They probably won't have blockers, so these Memnites having power is probably better than the Ornithopters having flying. Like getting to take out fairies and stuff. Now, I potentially need to take out one more card or just bring one less card in. Uh, so, Stoneforge is really good in the matchup. Pure Seal is really good in the matchup. Mardisol being able to be a 5 4 is really good. I think it's probably just a Skyfish because I don't have time to be doing stuff like that. I kind of want to leave the Glinhawks in to combo with Quest. So, yeah. Yeah, let's trim a Skyfisher. Skyfisher is nice with Thraven Inspector and stuff, but. I think what we're bringing is more important. I think this this makes me not want to bring in this Colossus Hammer, honestly. But if we have pure Seal Paladins out, getting to equip this for, for free is very nice. Uh, could only bring in one of these. I think I like that. I think we'll, we'll go with this. So our opponent gets to be on the play for game two. This hand is an easy mulligan. I mean, kind of tempting because we have the quest, but again, we have the Batter Skull, which is bad. Mulligan. I do actually really like this Giver of Runes here. Uh, I think I'll actually keep this based on the strength of Giver of Runes, be able to play Giver of Runes, Memnite, turn one. And then just, you know, deploy like Core Skyfish or replay the Memnite. Getting to put the Argentum Armor back in this London Mulligan is very nice. Of course, we have to draw a quest for the Holy Relic on turn one. We wouldn't be opposed. Opponent leads on Basic Island. We draw Arid Mesa. So we're just going to pop that straight away just to thin out our deck of lands again. We don't really need to worry about drawing lands because our opponent's going to path this into a bunch of them over the course of this game, I'm sure. Opting in response to the giver. You got it. And give her resolves. We'll play at the Memnite, I think, because we just want to start getting in damage here. Every draw request, we still get to, like Skyfisher replay the Memnite at some point. So, you know, it's not a big loss if we draw a quest and get punished by having played at that Memnite. Opponent cracks Flooded Strand. I think I'm just going to yield through this turn, try and earn back a bit of clock. Untapped Holy Fountain, interesting. Stoneforge Mystic, okay. I'm really glad we brought in Disenchant and Fragment Eyes here. We've got Sword of Feast and Famine, sure. We play out our Arid Mesa. Again, just thinning out our deck a little. There is value in playing at this Thraven Inspector so that the Skyfish can bounce it, replay it so it can make more clues, but... I think I'm just interested in getting some power on the board because our opponent's doing Stoneforge Mystic stuff over there. So because of this, I'm actually going to hold the Memnite in hand, I believe. So that ability resolves, return Memnite, and we'll hold it now because we actually kind of do want to see a quest and be able to get it off as soon as possible. All right, let our opponent have the turn back here. I'm pretty happy to sit behind this, like, let the Skyfish get in for damage throughout this game. Colossus Hammer, hmm? Well, that doesn't really do anything for us just yet. So we'll actually hold that for any potential pure steals we draw. Gonna get straight into combat here. Attack with our Skyfisher. Yep, our opponent takes the damage. Second main will play a Thraben Inspector. And 
and pass back to our opponent. What have you got for us, opponent? I'm sure they're thinking of fetching with their flooded strand right now. I would assume tapped Hallowed Fountain here. Basic planes, okay. Is this going to be like a Vendillion click? Yeah, okay. Sure. If they want to take the Colossus Hammer, I'll get a different card instead, which I'm more than fine with. Getting to hold this cool activation, very important. Okay, they chose to put nothing away. Makes sense. They have a land to like activate Stoneforge, drop this sword and equip to the Vendillion Click, we could be in trouble. Oh, they're just going to try and race us with Click, okay. Sure. No blockers. I'm pretty sure at some point they're going to have to... Okay, we're just going to crack this clue. I feel like at some point they're going to have to let this V-Click do some blocking duty. Yeah, that Glenhawk's a good draw for that. Ooh. Pure Steel, huh? So we want to lead on Pure Steel. Uh, we want to go to Combat first, I think. No, let's just lead on Pure Steel make them make them do a thing. I don't. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't know if they can let that resolve. That's fine. Let's go to combat. Okay, we'll attack with our Skyfisher once more. Okay, they take the damage. So let's play out this Memnite and try and get this Glenhawk down. I don't know if they've seen Glenhawk yet. This will be interesting. Okay. That's allowed to resolve. Awesome. Yes, I would love to return an artifact. I'll return this Memnite. And we'll pass to our opponent. So, yeah, this Vicklick's not looking like a great attacker anymore, honestly. Even if they put the sword on it, I think we're able to race pretty effectively. You've got it, opponent. So we'll have to discard a card, which will just be the snow-covered plains. Which is why I actually chose not to play a land that turn, I think. Yeah, I could have had to play land, yep. What's up, opponent? Play another land, sure. It'll be very telling here if they choose to equip the sword. Which, this style of deck makes me think that they don't have Supreme Verdicts anywhere. Yep, sure thing. Oh, equipped to the Stone Forge, huh? Um, I think I want to try my luck with blocking here. And then we're going to activate Giver giving pro white here just to deny them the abilities of sort of feast and famine hmm the other option there was to use glen hulk to block Vendillion click and give pro blue but i'm really not concerned about the v click okay quest's a good draw so we're going to play that out play out a mem knight Yes, I would love to use Quest for the Holy Relic's ability. Thank you. We will... Yeah, we'll play out the Colossus Hammer. We're losing the ability to potentially draw off pure steels, but it's fine. Let's go to combat. We will attack with these three. This Memnite's going to do blocking duty against that Stoneforge Mystic. Hit them for five down to seven. We'll play out our land because now yeah, we're empty handed so we don't care about this sort of feasts and famine hit. We're 
having one card the same as zero in this scenario, right? What have you got for me, opponent? This looks like potentially an opt or... Okay, they're moving over to V-Click. That makes sense. They are going to combat. Attacking with both again. Well... I think I'm happy to just chill here because I actually have lethal on them currently. I don't know if I want to take advantage of having lethal, but I certainly don't want to lose anything to a path because I tap my giver of runes here. They do have supreme verdict, sure. Last thing is we have battle skull on our deck still for if this quest happens to be good at some point. Pure still is a very good draw. So if we can somehow get two more artifacts into play, we can equip this Colossus Hammer to Pure Steel. Which maybe is a reason to hold on to the land and the the Memnite, because what's this equip cost? Eight, yeah, we're never getting to that naturally, are we? Yield through the turn here to try and buy back some clock. Will our opponent make some decisions here? Okay, they just gave us the turn straight back. Uh, we'll just go to combat and attack for two here. If our opponent has a snap cast or a V-click, I'm happy to to make this trade. Yep, the pain cost for something. Snapcaster. Uh, so they're probably gonna snap opt here. And then just trade off with their pure steel, which is fine. Yep. We'll play out this this land. Get us to Batterskull Manor. Okay, now they're casting their opt. And they are going to put a card on the bottom. Alright, that's good for us. As good as it can be, I guess. Another land from our opponent. Just good because they have missed land drops. That tells me that they've potentially drawn that very recently. Casting something. Ooh, they're casting their own battle skull. Okay. That is very, very frightening. Uh, Fragmentize or disenchant off the top. One time. Stoneforge. Okay. We'll absolutely cast this Stoneforge. Use quest for the Holy Relic's ability. Yes, we'll use Stoneforge Mystic's ability. Uh, hmm. We have choices here, I think. So we could get a sword and immediately cast it, but I think I'm more interested in getting this Batter Skull. Because it blocks their battle skull quite nicely. And we'll give the turn back to our opponent. And we win the match. Okay, that's awesome. Very good result so far. Uh, stick around and join us for match two. Alright, here we go guys. Match number two with Quest for the Holy Relic. Reversing Addictions. Uh, we have won the die roll yet again. This is crazy. When we we're playing Sun and Moon at Control Deck, we were always losing, and now we're always winning the die roll. So we would love to play first. Uh, this hand is is rough, but we are going to keep because we do have quests: zero drop, one drop, uh, some nice two drops as well. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna lead quest here. Hold on to the Memnite. Second turn. We'll decide what to do if we draw another land. We're actually probably going to avoid this second... Oh, no, we'll probably, we'll probably play the second quest. Here we go. Cast this. Let our opponent have the turn. So if we draw a land, we're probably going to play a second quest, play Memnite, and then play the Giver of Runes. Having Giver of Runes activation up is very, very nice. And having two quest activations up is also very, very nice. Okay, we're versing 
Tron. Not great. Okay, so if I avoid playing a second quest here, I can Memnite, Skyfish, and Memnite. Then the next turn, if we draw a land, Stoneforge Giver. If I play quest Memnite here, then I draw a land next turn, I get to Skyfish and Memnite. Yeah, so I think I actually, now I am going to shift to to this plan because we want to increase our chances of being able to get quest off before they get Tron active. Because if that happens, we get to blow up their Tron lands and keep them off Tron. So we'll cast the Skyfisher here. So here we go, we're on two counters. Skyfisher enters. Bounces Memnite. Play Memnite yet again. Get the quest up to three counters. And so we've got a lot of good draws next turn. So we've got any of our 15 other lands as good draws. We have any other one drop creature Glenhawk especially we have skyfishes as well so we've got three more giver of runes four thraven inspectors that's seven 17 lands is 24 four Glenhawk is 28 so 32 oh chalice okay chalice on zero so they're actually Eldrazitron which is even better for us they're chelsea on zero and play a Maze Mind Tome. Okay. So that's taken away Course Skyfisher as being a good draw for us. And we draw a land. Awesome. So here we go. Uh, Stoneforge wants to find the Battle Skull. Oh, does it? Because it finds the sword. We can get that online pretty quick. It's difficult. Because what, if we draw a land, we'll get to deploy the sword and equip it. Otherwise, we can always equip the battle skill next turn with the stone forge. Uh, I think I like the sword, honestly, because it gets my opponent dead quicker. And we'll cast this Giver to get our quest up to five. Okay, here we go. Living the dream here, folks. We remove five quest counters. We'll get a Gentum Armor. We will equip it to the Skyfisher. We'll go to combat and we'll attack with all. Okay, so I triggered ability. Yep, destroy this target permanent. Okay, so my opponent's never going to get above two lands here, which is just insane for us. Like any land they play, I'll just keep popping every single turn, unless they have a way to deal with my. 8-9 core Skyfisher with their 2 mana. Yep, there we go. Easy game 1 for us. So going into game 2. Uh, we do want Disenchant and Fragmentize because they run stuff. They have they likely have 4 mana Khan and a bunch of stuff they want to get off him. I want to bring in my Paths to deal with Thought Not Seers. Giver Runes is fantastic to be able to protect from colors, so we do like that. I honestly like Stoneforge as well. Being able to just tune up a battle skill is very nice. Is there a better sword than Fire and Ice for this matchup? Not really. Uh, I think I honestly just want to bring in Colossus Hammer over the Sword of Fire and Ice, as crazy as that sounds. So I've got to cut six cards here. Uh, is this a matchup where I want to cut the Stoneforge package is the biggest question here. Maybe Marta Soul's not at his best since even as a 5-4 he doesn't really match up well. Like a lot of our grand creatures just aren't at their best. 
I do like my Memnites and Orthops. Orthops is more than Memnites in this matchup. I think getting off a fast quest is still very good here. Um, hmm, maybe maybe pure steel's too slow. I think I like cutting the pure steels here for being too slow, and we'll trim two martyr souls and. Uh, yeah, I like that. Let's call that. Being El Drowsy Tron and making us bring in paths means that we do have to make some tough cuts, but this hand is... I, I think I have to keep it because it has the quest. Yeah, I'll keep it. Sometimes you have to be a bit risky, you know, the one land is a bit rough, but... Um, the expedition map's fine. Off the Eldrazi Temple. Yeah, you just sometimes have to keep these risky one lands. Being on the draw helps a lot. And also, we don't draw a land, we draw like zero drops, it's fine, because we have the Glinhawk. Yeah, that's cool. So let's play Quest. Let's play the Memnite. Use Quest's ability. Pass turn back to our opponent. Another Eldrazi Temple? Okay. Do you have a Thought Knot or are you cracking that map? This is a Thought Knot, okay. Sure. So, they honestly probably want to take this path, but it depends how scary they think my hand is, considering I do have a quest for the Holy Relic in play. Turn two, Thought Knot two. Yeah, they have to take the path. That's That's not bad for us. Next turn, even without a land, I get to play Glenhawk, replay Memnite, get quest up to three. With a land, I get to play Giver of Runes as well. Fragmentize. I don't think I care about the map, so... I'm just going to play out Glenhawk. Yes, use quest. Yes, return an artifact. We'll return this artifact. We will play this artifact. Yes, we'll use quest. And let our opponent have the turn back. So the best things we can draw here are Zero Drops or Glenhawks to help us get quest off next turn and start blowing up their lands. Probably that Blast Zone to start with. Is this a Smasher? Ooh, okay. So if they attack with both, I think I'm fine to take nine here and then reconsider the option of blocking next turn. Because, like, blocking Smasher doesn't do anything. And blocking Thought Knob, we're in. We're still on a four turn clock from this Smasher, so. I think this. Letting this Thought Knot through for now is pretty free. What do we got? Core Skyfisher. Okay, so. We're going to play Giver of Runes. Um, one. Oh, that blast zone's going to really punish us, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just going to attack with this Glenhawk because they've got the blast zone anyway. If I can survive a turn, this Giver of Runes is going to help out a bit. It'll let our Memnite block the Thought Nuts here indefinitely, but I think our opponents just had kind of the crazy combo start that we were hoping to get. So, next turn, land is good. Any one drop or zero drop creature is good. But again, if they can pop this blast zone, I just lose my quest anyway. What do they got? Dismember? Dismember and Giver? Sure. So I think because of the position we're in... Okay, they cracked their map, that's fine. Because of the position we're in, we are going to chump block thought and let's see with our Memnite. And then pray we can get Argentamama. Pray we can get Argentamama, blop this smasher. And jump off the Memnite with whatever other creature we get to play, I guess.
Yeah, chump block. Got to see with like a stone forge if we get to draw a land. Let's see what we draw. We do have another turn because we get to chump block this smasher with the Glenhawk, worst case. Thraven Inspector, okay. Awesome. So this blast zone is still gonna give us trouble. But we're dead to it anyway, so because they get to take away our blocker and attack in, right? I just have to kill this smasher. Whew. Got to make sure I do that before I go to my declare attackers. Because I have to declare the attack. Attach to Glenhawk. Okay. Attack. Uh, yep, destroy that reality smasher, please. Hope they don't have another one. Hope they don't have a land to play and immediately pop this blast zone. I hope they have to crack their map. Ooh, this game has been very, very close. We might get there. We just need to really hope for no smash or no land here. Oh, they have the land. Are they going to pop the... Wait, the blast zone's three to pop, right? Yeah, they can do it anyway. I'm silly. Ooh, okay, they are popping the blast zone. Uh, we do live, though. We live on two. Which means if we draw a land, we get to play Stoneforge. Chump block for another turn. And then we, we're just hoping to draw a path at some point for this Thought Knot. So we get to draw a card off it and get rid of their last attacker. Okay. Cast Stone Forge. Get the Batter Skull. And this Stone Forge is on chump blocking duty. And we're also hoping our opponent draws actual nothing. Is this Endbringer? Khan? Ballista. Okay, we're we're dead to Ballista. Okay, going into game three, is there anything we want to change? I don't believe so. We just got unlucky there that my opponent had a very fast start and that we didn't draw a second land for ages. Disenchanted Fragmentize definitely look good here. Uh, yeah, the, the swords are all looking pretty bad here because... Uh, because our opponent doesn't have colored things, which I actually want to take this Colossus Hammer. I don't know why I brought it in, because I took the Pure Steels out. So I can either bring a Martyr Soul back in or bring in a Sword, which Sword of War and Peace is likely to kill very quickly. We could bring in Feast and Famine to protect from Dismember. Uh, I don't hate bringing in Feast and Famine, honestly. No, it's probably just a Martyr Soul. I probably need to have my creature count high because I brought in the paths. Yeah, I like that. Let's do this. So our only quest target really is Argenta Armor, but that's kind of how we roll with the second AI. We will play first. Uh, we will Mulligan. This is a pretty free one. Uh, oh, this is a very good one. So we'll keep. So we've got, what, three creatures. We'll, we'll have to put this Fragmentize away. But otherwise, this hand is looking very nice. We do still need a little something, but so far, so good. Quest, Memnite. Yes, we use the ability. Cast this other Memnite. Yes, we use the ability. And we'll let our opponent have the turn. So we've got a lot of live draws here. We won't be able to get the quest off on turn two. But we get to play the Stoneforge next turn. If we draw, run a run a creature, as long as they're not all two drops. Or if we draw a Skyfisher or a Glenhawk, we're in really good shape. Okay, land wasn't ideal. But that's fine, we'll play the Stoneforge. 
Uh, we'll get the batter skull, and if we draw nothing, we at least get to put a batter skull into play, which is honestly still very fine in this matchup. Even though I'm pretty sure it's the batter skull, I'm still gonna still gonna widen this here and get a good look at it. There we go. There's our batter skull. Okay. Uh, yeah, attack with the Memnites. Why not? What's the worst that could happen? Okay. And back to our opponent. Them leading on Blast Zone is pretty good for us. The Drives Temple, okay, so they could have Mattery Shaver here. Which they do. If I get to get Quest off next turn, I will blow up that Eldrazi Temple. Because the, the Blast Zone isn't scary until you get too many lands into play. Skyfish or Glenhawk? Can we do it? Martyr's Soul. Okay. So we are going to play this Martyr's Soul. Cast. Pay one. Pay one. And pay that. So any creature is a live draw now. And we'll just pass back to our opponent, hold up the ability to flash in our battle skull. Which if they attack with a reshaper, I'm honestly not even gonna bother giving them the trigger, because I don't want them to get a land for the blast zone until our quest goes off. Which next turn they can naturally play a land. Maybe the Blast Zone's fine, because I'd still have a Batter Skull in play. Ah, just want to give them the least chance possible of activating this Blast Zone, I think. Oh, that's probably wrong, because I'm potentially going to attack with this Batter Skull anyway. And it's going to block with this Reshaper. Creature? Please? That is a creature. We would love to use Quest for the Holy Relic's ability. We would not like to use Stoneforge Mystic's ability. Um, I'll pop this, see what they want to do about it. Get our gentle mama. Put it on the. I'll uh, we'll put it on a memnite actually, because they can't blast on this memnite away. So attack here, attack here, and attack here. So our Gentamama trigger, because we don't have any one drops we care about, is just going to blow up this Eldrazi temple. Keep them off their biggest things as much as possible. They can block with Reshaper, but it's whatever. They have to like hit Natty Tronland and then have the other Tronland in hand for this to be bad for me. Yep. But even if they do, I'm not too worried about what they can do here. The next turn. Oh, this is mine, really? Well, if they have the play power plan, I'm in a lot of trouble. I suppose that that was the only way they were getting out of this right, so I probably should have blown up the Urza land. And they are Etron, so they're, they're going to luck sack this, I'm sure. Normal Tron would have no chance. Oh, thank you. Thank you. What are you going to play a Thought Not Seer? I mean, I thought not say it doesn't do anything on this. Like, it doesn't get to take anything from my hand, and it just is another chump blocker. It stops my Martyr's Soul attacking, I guess. Spatial Contortion, their Reshaper. Sure, trying to hit the last front land. That's very heads up play from our opponent. Cabin of Souls, okay. Likely naming Eldrazi, yep. And conceding. Wonderful. 
So that's two matches down and two wins. Stick around and we'll be right back with match number three. Alrighty, we're on a hot streak here. We're going for match number three with our quest for the Holy Relic deck versus Ajundo, I believe. Eljundo. Our opponent's playing first. Uh, this hand does not have quest, nor does it have Stoneforge Mystic, so this is a pretty easy mulligan. Uh, oh, this is also a mulligan. Uh, this is a keep. This is rough, but it's a keep. So the batter skull isn't ideal. Neither is the second pure steel. But otherwise, this hand looks pretty good. Gets lead turn one quest. Uh, if we literally don't draw lands. We get to play Thrave Inspector, then play Glen Hawk, bouncing the clue. Our opponent's leading Verdant Catacombs. If they have a hand hate spell, I'm in a lot of trouble here. Looks like they do not. And we drew an Ornithopter. That's fantastic. So we'll pop this here. Get basic planes, play quest. Our opponent's having a read. Now the question is, do we play out the Ornithopter or not? Uh, if we play out the Ornithopter, it protects us from hand hate, but if they're hand hating us, I don't think they're honestly taking the Ornithopter. If we play out the Ornithopter, then it protects, then it's not protected from removal, so it's a reason to potentially hold it. They didn't hand hate turn one, if they hand hate turn two, I don't think they're taking the Ornithopter out of this hand. They're more likely to take the Glidhawk. So. But I think because we're land light, I think we just want to get our triggers where we can. Our opponent's having a think. Okay, that resolved, and we will pass back to our opponent. Let's see what they crack this Verdant Catacombs for in our end step. Tapped over to him, sure. All right, following up with Basic Swamp. <laughs> they have an Inquisition, sure. What do you take, opponent? The card that's... That you might not even realize is good with what I'm doing here or one of my two cards that has value as the game goes late because like this is obviously the best card in our hand but we don't have the matter to play it yet this if they work it out works really nicely here this one is kind of a middle ground between the two where like it's a one drop that I can play but it gives me intrinsic value like this pure steel would They took the Glenhog very, very heads up from our opponent. I'm inclined to believe that they made a correct play there. Okay, back to us. All right, we drew the second land, so we're just going to play out this pure steel. Again, it's the best card in our hand, so we are going to play it out. And also, like, next turn we draw another one drop, we can just play out Thrave Inspector and the other one drop. And pass back to our opponent. We do not want to attack, thank you, with our zero two. What have you got for me, opponent? We have another basic swamp. Liliana of the Veil, sure thing, opponent. You gonna take away my three inspector from my hand? You are, okay. And they discard scavenging ooze, which is interesting. I'm assuming maybe they have another scavenging ooze because scavenging ooze is pretty good on this board and with this game state with so many creatures in being already. All right, we drew another land, which isn't ideal. Uh, I'm just going to crack it to thin out our deck a little. It's better than not doing that, I'm pretty sure. Oh. And we'll go to our declare attacks. Attack all creatures at Liliana. The Ornithopter attacking doesn't matter, but it's style points. Also a habit I got into when... Uh, what's that card? There's a white card. Oh, so obviously not too relevant here, but the... Hmm, it's 
the modal one where you either sack and attack a creature, untap two creatures, or gain four life. Blessed Alliance, I think, yeah. Field of Ruin from our opponent. Tarmogoyf, okay. That's a big boy. A 3 4. Hmm. They trade this Liliana. I actually don't know which creature I keep here. Well, it's almost definitely the pure steel, but it's not. <sighs> yeah. This having flying is nice, but I don't care about attacking anymore anyway. Not until I get this quest going. It does make draws like Glint Hawk a lot worse. Well, that draw isn't getting any worse. Let our opponent have a turn again. This is one thing. Our deck doesn't actually have graveyard hate, which isn't ideal. Yeah, this time ago, if it's allowed to attack me. With that said, like this isn't a matchup where I should care too much about hating on the graveyard, I don't think. Grim Flare, okay. I'll eat my words, I guess. The graveyard is somewhat important. Ugh, okay, uh, Give of Runes is nice if it gets to live, so we'll play that. Yes, we'll use Quest of the Holy Relic's ability. Thank you. And we will let our opponent have the turn again. So our best draw here at this point is Core Skyfisher because I've got four mana. Ooh, unearth. They cycled it. Sure. Because the Skyfisher's text says, when it enters the battlefield, you must return a target permanent to your hand. It doesn't say another target permanent, so I can play it for two, bounce itself, replay it for another two. Uh, Verdant Catacombs from opponent, assume they're getting him for 9 here, and we are going to accept that damage. Because both of our creatures are very important here. If I can untap these two creatures and draw anything, I'm in not bad shape, I think. This Grim Flayer is going to be a problem. They basically get to set up their next draw a little if they want. They put one card back on top, so that's not a good sign for us. But also they've got this Verdant Catacombs they didn't crack, so maybe they forget and they crack that Verdant Catacombs. Well, that's not a good draw. So what, I'd block here and here, this would check this. This game isn't going anywhere for us. Let's go to game two. So normally in this matchup we'd be bringing in Pure Steels and they're already in, so that's cool. Uh, I want to cut some number of these. I used to cut all of them in this kind of matchup, but I actually want to keep some number of artifacts in my deck. Uh, they have Unearth, but I don't think Katoma Priest matters. Paths are probably pretty good. Uh, is there anything else worth cutting? Like maybe Glint Hawks. I think... See, so, like, I don't think I want Colossus Hammer. I want this. I know I want that. I probably just want to swap that like that. I'm probably not going up on equipments in this matchup, I don't think. I just want this sword in particular. And because they have gigantic creatures, I probably want to bring in paths for Memnites. Because Ornithops is having evasion is better for me in this matchup. And yeah, that looks pretty good. Oh, my opponent could save the match. Well, that's good, I guess. I mean, I would have liked to have played this one out because I honestly think this is favoured for our opponent. Stoneforge Mystic helps. Sword of Feast and Famine coming in helps. Pure Seals being main helps. Um, I don't... I. That's a card I should have considered, actually. I, I often run a single ley line of Sanctity in this deck, just so if I see it in my opening hand, I can protect myself from hand hate entirely. Maybe that's what I want over the Colossus Hammer. I think the Colossus Hammer, now that Pure Souls are main, either wants to be main or not in the deck at all. But it is like, if I'm needing to race my opponent, I can bring it in. But often in those matchups, I'm tempted to cut the Pure Steel, so I don't know. 
But yeah, I guess that's a that's a match three win, putting us at three and zero. Oh, so join us for match number four. All right, here we go. Match number four, playing Quest for the Holy Rally, currently three and zero oh, versus Dead Baby Unicorn. Our opponent has won the die roll. Good for them. And let's see what kind of a hand we have. They're still deciding whether or not they want to play first. Uh, I'm going to keep this hand based on the strength of Stoneforge Mystic. Because look, look at this. This is a nice curve, right? We get to turn one Memnite Glenhawk. Probably hold the Memnite after that, depending on what our opponent does. Turn two Stoneforge. Turn three. Probably, probably, eh. Probably turn to pure steel, honestly. We'll see. Ooh. Marta's soul is very nice. So. Huh. Does that change things for us? I. Not quite sure, honestly. I think we'll worry about it when we get to it. I will indeed bounce my Memnite. Uh, and I'll hold it for now. Hmm. Turning what our opponent does, we might actually just want to get this Marta Soul down as a 5 4. Hmm. I'm kind of stumped here. Oh, that looks not great on Magic Online, if I'm, if I'm being honest. They fetched in a Ketria Triumph off their Misty, which is a Teema one. I think I think we actually versed this Teema opponent with Sun and Moon. And I think they had Counterbalance, so that tells me I want to get my one drops down as soon as possible, I think. Huh. Another Marta Soul. Well, I think that makes that decision a fair bit easier. Uh, I definitely want to play a two drop here. Even if they counterbalance this Raven Spectre gets countered, I'm kind of okay with that. I think. So I think it's going to be. Mm, yeah, it's going to be pure steel. Let's play out the pure steel. Okay. Is this a spell snare? Sure. Well, I think I'd rather that get countered than my stone forge. Okay, so now we'll attack with Glenhawk. Because honestly, the plan there was play a Memonite and play a Marta Soul. Because we drew the second. Next turn, we could play... Play the second Marta Soul and have that be a 5-4. But, because our opponent decided that we can't have any fun, they counted our pure steel, so we're just going to get in for two in the air. And then, next turn, we're going to play the stone forge, no matter what, I think. They're probably going to hold up counter magic again, but that's fine, we'll just keep getting in for two with our Glenhawk. Ooh, Glenhawk's nice. Glenhawk's a good draw. So, they're almost definitely holding up counter magic here. Uh, let's play a Thraven Inspector and see what happens. Like I said, the fact that I'm assuming my opponent has counter balance the deck means I want to get my one drops down. Uh, the clue token here is going to be pretty cool for this kind of matchup. We'll play out a Memnite. See if they want to counter that. They're also probably going to want to counter this Glenhawk. Because I think they're pretty threatening. They let it resolve. Okay. They're going to... Okay. They're going to let us just get this value. Uh, okay. So let's get in with our Glenhawk. Are they... Doing something to my Glenhawk. Hello, opponent. 
Oh, that's so rude. They're stealing my Glinhawk. Huh. Well. Okay, at least we should get to resolve a Martyr's Soul, I guess. That's pretty rude opponent. I mean, it's not great against us anyway. Like, if they attack, cool. They get in for two and I still get to get in for a bunch. Like, this basically has to play defense for them. It's not as impactful as Archmage's Charms can be, you know, stealing... Like, if it's stolen quest for the Holy Relic, I'd be miserable. <laughs> that would be very, very good. They've, they just got Archmage's Charms still another... Okay, what is this? When you draw your second card each turn, create a 2-2 two, two green cat. Ah, oh, okay. Sure. Oh, that's really cool. Okay. They stole my Glenhawk to get a non-human into play. So this probably isn't the deck I thought it was then. But I mean, this cat still doesn't mean too much. Mystic Sanctuary, sure. Are you going to put Archimedes Charm or of one mind on top? They're going to put of one, of one mind on top of their deck, sure. All right, opponent's doing some cool stuff. I like it. Are they going to attack me with my own hawk? They are not. Okay. Memnite is interesting. So I think I am going to attack my Glen Hawk into that Glen Hawk, and I am going to attack this Martisol into their cat. Uh. Yeah. So let's do that. Just force some issues here. See if that Archmage's Charm is worth taking down two Glint Hawks, you know? Yep, that's fair. And is your cat trading for Martyr's Soul? It is not okay, yeah, because I suppose they want to keep a non human in play. We'll cast a Memnite. Cast a big Martyr's Soul, because our lands are currently all untapped. Awesome. And we'll cast our Stoneforge Mystic. Finding... I actually want to find... I want to find the sword so I can take down Joel Rail with, an, with a damage trigger. Okay, back to our opponent. So they get to, to what, draw two cards or something here for one mana with that uh, of one mind. Okay, I don't get to see what of one mind does, I guess. Here we go. Sure, so they get to draw two for one mana, that's fine. And they get another cat, that is also fine. I have no flyers in play. That's kind of a problem for this sort of fire, and I was hoping to get frisky. Okay. Glad I didn't get Battle Skull. I was actually just thinking maybe I should have gotten Battle Skull knowing that, but this makes me feel better. I think this is the same opponent because I remember these fancy lightning bolts. Maybe it's just a different team of deck that they're playing now. Ooh, another Martyr Soul. That is very cool. So let's go to combat first. We will... Okay, they're doing a thing. No. Attack and attack. What have you got, opponent? Maybe a cat trades with the Martyr Soul now. Two cats trade with the big Martyr Soul. I'm okay with that. And my opponent takes three to my smaller Martyr Soul. 
Uh, sure, we'll assign damage like that. That is fine. Now we will cast this Martyr's Soul. Do you have a Counterspell opponent? Or can I have another 5 4? Okay, they're fetching. Wouldn't be surprised to see this fetching a Mystic Sanctuary yet. Yeah, putting Archmage's Charm back on top, assumedly. Does this resolve opponent? Okay, they counter with an Archmage's Charm. That is fine. Um, I'm just going to crack this here. If I draw a land, I think I just want to play it now. Yep. And it is your turn, opponent. Well, we've gotten down to 10, which is something. We currently don't really have value on board, though, and this sort of fire is probably getting countered. Yep, they make another cat. Because they, they do have an Archmage's Charm on top. Oh, sorry, they put an Archmage's Charm on top, which they've now drawn, so... The Sword of Fire and Ice is 100% getting countered. Yeah, get in for one. Treat yourself. We got no blockers. I think I just want them to spend their mana here. Force of Negation? Okay. Showing off a little opponent. Let's go to combat. I'm going to attack with everyone because I think they're incentivized to block the Martyr Soul. And if they're not, then what? They eat someone and I still get, I get five damage in. Well, they got something. Lightning Bolt the Martyr Soul. That makes this look a lot worse for us. Mistakes were made. He's going to eat... Oh, Memnite, okay. So we get in for two. And our opponent's last card, I believe, is Archmage's Charm. Which, if they draw nothing here, is probably going to draw them cards. Oh, Snapcaster, that's really bad for us. They're probably going to have one mind here to draw two cards, which means their Archmage's Charm. I was going to say they were probably going to draw two with it to trigger their Jewel Rail, but... Now they're probably get, going to just going to hold it up for counter magic. Yep. So they've drawn two cards. They still have an Archmage's Charm, I believe. Ugh. I mean, I'm still on 19, so I'm not dead by any means, but... Yeah, I think we're done with this game. Let's go to game two. So they do have creatures and they're somewhat important. Like that Joel Rail seems very important for them. So I don't hate bringing in paths. Uh, well, Canonus actually seems pretty interesting here. And I think because they're drawing so many cards, I do actually like Sword of War and Peace, but I don't hate Fire and Ice. Uh, so unless I can add the War and Peace, I guess. So what, this is another mid-rangey matchup. Uh, I like the Flyers, so I'm going to keep the Ornithopters in and cut the Memnites. Maybe I don't want to bring Paths in. Is that wrong? What else? I mean, the Martyr's Souls actually looked good here. I assume Pure Steels are also pretty good. Uh. Maybe I can just bring in one path. 
Is that weird? Or maybe bring in sort of Feast and Famine instead and go. Or maybe Colossus Hammer. I don't think Feast and Famine does anything for us, to be honest. I don't think we're trying to race with the Colossus Hammer. I think we. Hmm. Uh, this is really tough. Let's let's just not bring in the War and Peace. Let's bring in two path and two cannonists here. Leave it at that. We don't really have cards for this matchup, I don't think. Yes, I would like to play first. Uh, we will mulligan based on the fact that our gentle armor is in our hand, and we will keep based on the fact that quest for the holy relics in our hand. We've got to put a card on the bottom, so it will be a planes. Because we're hoping to draw more creatures here, so... It's it's not a, as big a deal as I'm making it out in these games, but getting to have slightly less lands in your deck is a good thing. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's any harm in just playing out this Ornithopter. Okay, so next time we get to play Terrible Inspector and Martyr's... Three Bin Inspector and Martyr's Soul. If that's something we wish to do. I'm honestly hoping to draw other stuff to do, but I suppose we can do it because then the turn after we can draw a card with... Okay, never mind. We are going to... So they could bolt this Ornithopter. Which honestly I think is a reason to still play out the Thraven Inspector and the Martyr's Soul. Because next turn we still get to play the Sky Fisher, but we also can potentially bounce the Thraven Inspector instead if they do have interaction for our Ornithopter. Uh, yep, we get a clue token. Cast this. Get another counter in our quest. So I quest up to three. So this Skyfisher next turn should get us there. And what are we scared of? Nothing really this early in the game, honestly. We are potentially scared of Archmage's charm being able to steal what we... Okay, they just straight up killed the Martisol. That's very okay with us. Means they might not be able to kill the Skyfisher. Oh, is this going to be a counterbalance? Okay, it's Young Pyramids. That's even better for us. Okay, our opponent gets to see what our deck really does. Here's the Skyfisher. We will return Ornithopter, cast Ornithopter. Yes, we would love to use Quest for the Holy Relic's ability. Um, despite their young Pyromancer being there, we are going to destroy their lands. So, beginning of combat, pop the quest. We could also get Sword of Fire and Ice. Hmm, so we get Sword of Fire and Ice, we get to hit them for two, we get to kill their young Pyromancer. And then even if they Archmage's Charm to steal three Bin Inspector, we get to re-equip to the Skyfisher. Um... Hmm... But if we get... Argenta Mama, we have to kill a land. And then what they can make to, oh, I think we just get there with Argenta Mama. Let's let's go for it. We didn't put this card in a deck to not do this right. Yep, so this trigger will destroy steam vents. 
if they ever miss a land drop, I'll get to start actually taking down stuff like the Young Pyromancer. If they're not blocking, they're taking seven, which is good for us. If they block them, they're not going to have Young Pyromancer, which is good for us. Uh, this Cannonist is coming down next turn, which will be nice. I don't believe they have any way to take care of this Raven Inspector other than using our Aegis Charm to steal it. They could have a naturalized type effect off this breeding pool that they've just played untapped. Well, they're doing something. Oh, gross. Petty theft? That's not great for us. Oh dear. Okay. Uh, play out the canonist. Okay, that resolves. Let's go to combat. We will attack with the Raven Inspector and Sky Fisher. Because this young Pyromancer can't afford to block our Thraven Inspector, so this is a free attack. Sky Fisher has flying. Yep, our opponent's on five, so we might get there just by slowly beating in. Maybe it was right to get sort of fire and ice, because I'd actually be able to play it. Yep. So they have a human and a non-human, so they get to draw two cards. But they cannot cast any more non-artifact spells this turn. Okay. Yep, we will thin our library a little more. Draw Pure Steel Paladin. What does that do for us? Not a lot. Uh, let's go to combat. Attack. So if I attack with this Thread Inspector, they can double block. If I attack with this, they can double block. Uh... I think I want to attack with all three. Yeah, it's because the Candidate is my opponent's very close to dead. Okay. Is this basic mountain lightning bolt? Steam vents. Untapped. What has my opponent got? I have two lethal attackers right now. Okay, so there's a lightning bolt on the. No? Okay. Petty theft, maybe, on the Skyfisher. Sinkhole on the Skyfisher. On the Canonist, okay. And now you're dead to the Skyfisher? Yep. And concession when they realize Sky Fisher has flying in three, two, one. All right, going back to the sideboard. Uh, nothing really stood out to me there. It doesn't make me want like my Memnites back in or anything. I think my choice of sword is still correct. Maybe I should have got the sword instead of our gentle armor in that particular scenario but i mean it got our opponent low enough that they died so yeah let's let's run it back and see if we can steal game three to put us up to four and oh okay our opponent's deciding whether or not they wish to play first A lot of people seem to spend a lot of time in this particular part of the game. Okay, so decide to play first. Uh, we have a quest in our hand, so we're going to keep. Pretty simple. This is kind of nice. Also means when we play this, we just get to get Battle Skull for free. And if they do anything, like we didn't make the wrong choice because we had the right choice in hand all along. 
a little low on the way to get quests going off, but it's fine. It also means that we can't make the wrong choice with quests by getting a gentle armor. They're passing all the way to us, that's cool. Uh, yep, we're drawing too many lands here, so let's get started on the deck thinning here. Again, normally I have four horizon lands in this deck, I don't know how necessary it is. But uh, we've got fetch lands instead to kind of mimic that thinning idea, maybe... I actually only own these four iron maces on Magical Online at the moment, but... Uh, at some point I probably might go up to like eight fetches and see how that feels. Alright, they're fetching in response. I don't... What can they have? Spell Pierce? Okay, this is getting a tap Triumph and just getting some F6 value, I guess. Let's cast out Ornithopter, get some counters on our quest. Our best drop for next turn would be another zero drop, so that like we cast this, it hopefully resolves, play a zero drop, tap all three, play the Martyr's Soul... Okay, they're shocking in a breeding pool. And what, they're going to pass to us? So they're holding up like Banner Leak or whatever. That's cool. Uh, I'm not too concerned about them killing the Ornithopter in response to me playing my Glint Hawk because... I mean, I can't really play around. I've got no other artifacts to play except for the sword, which isn't happening anytime soon. So I think we play the Glinhawk into their open counter magic. If it resolves, we get to still deploy the Martyr Soul this turn. Yes, I would love to use Quest ability. Okay, are they going to kill Ornithopter in response? That would be... Oh yeah, the pain costs, okay. Or they counter my Glenhawk. Oh, deprive. Yeah, sure, opponent. Go nuts. It's kind of a punish, right? Because now I can't do anything else with my turn, but they they put themselves back a mana. Ooh. Ooh, they have a lightning bolt for my Ornithopter. Okay aggressive opponent this breeding pool's coming down tapped now sure sky fisher hmm doesn't do anything for us just yet but let's play a stone forge the nice thing is next turn this sky fisher can uh if i don't draw land it can bounce land i can replay it pretty nice like a bad deprive i guess Stone Forge, yes, we would love to grab the Battle Scales. Let's make sure that we definitely do that. And you can have the turn opponent. So the scariest thing my opponent can do here is play a third land and Archmage to my quest for the Holy Relic out from under me. But I believe if they had that, they wouldn't be so eager to deprive. Maybe they just don't have a third land. They do not. Okay. Good for us. Uh, that is... Um, how do I feel about that draw? The question is, do I want to get this batter skull into play or do I want to get my quest active? So... Hmm. So what, I can play Sky Fisher, bounce a land... Play the Martyr's Soul. Uh, yeah, let's let's cast this Sky Fisher and see what happens, I guess. Bounce this, play this, cast Martyr's Soul. So having this sort of Fire and Ice in hand is not great because it means they 
that I can't hold the ability to pop quest to get pro red. Okay, move to the beginning of combat, pop this, see if my opponent wants to respond, they do not. There's every chance they're holding up petty theft here, but okay. Guessing not, because they would have had to have done it there, because now I get this trigger. And we'll destroy the triome, thank you. Let's try this again. Concession in three, two, one. Okay, I want to play that. That's that's cool. That's cool, I guess. Okay. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll just play this. Go to combat. Attack with all. And we would like to destroy this breeding pool. Thank you. Uh, you dead opponent. Awesome, we got there. <laughs> I really was worried my opponent would have something there, but they just didn't. I guess they just wanted to let us do our thing, which is very generous of them. Thank you for that opponent. Uh, we're four and zero, so I guess this means that Sun and Moon sucks, and then that my quest deck is what I actually should have been playing all along. Uh, yeah, we got one more match to go, so I'll see you guys in match number five. All right, looks like we found an opponent here. This is match number five, currently 4-0, playing Quest for the Holy Relic against our opponent, Benjdu38. I won the die roll. I would love to go first. This deck loves going first. So if you've been watching the first four matches, I hope you understand what we are looking at here. This hand is hot. Check this out. Quest, right? Play out of Memnite. Yep, get our quest trigger. Yep. Uh, play out an Ornithopter. Yep. We could play out a third Ornithopter here. I think I'm actually going to leave just in case our opponent like double Simeons out of Anger of the Gods or something dumb. But, uh, yeah, we. We have a turn to air quotes kill here. Our opponent's led untapped scene events into serum visions. They are not going to be happy when they see what happens next turn. This ornithopter is going to get frisky. And no pact indications help them, no bolts help them. Our opponent is in a lot of trouble. Ooh, oh, stop it, deck. So let's play this Ornithopter, get a third counter in our quest for the Holy Relic. And let's cast a Glithawk. So this is our fourth counter. I would absolutely love to use Glithawk's ability. We'll return the Summoning Sick Ornithopter. We will play the Summoning Sick Ornithopter. We will use Quest for the Holy Relic's ability. Go to beginning of combat, we will sacrifice our quest for the Holy Relic. Let's have a look at our three options here. We will get the Argentum Armor. We will equip it to our Arnothopter. Attack with all creatures. Our Argentum Armor trigger will destroy this steam vents, thank you. And our opponent will take seven and <laughs> we're already going to game two here. Yeah, so that hand was uh, kind of awesome. All we saw over our opponent was the Steam Vents and a Serum Visions, which the biggest implication is that it could be Storm. Uh, also, potentially a blue control deck. So, if they're Storm, we want Colossus Hammer and we want these Cannoners. These Cannoners are fine if they're a blue control deck as well. Uh, the paths are probably not good. The fragment ties and the disenchant don't matter. Uh, our sword's fine. We saw blue red, so the blue red sword can stay in. I think the safest bet is to just bring in two canonists. 
Uh, but what do we want to cut is the question. Because we don't even know if the cannon is good. Like, if they're a blue counter spell deck, like, it's fine. And if they're Storm, we want this kind of effect and potentially, like, the cost hammer to speed up. But not knowing exactly what they're doing with that Serum Visions. Like, Giver of Runes is good to protect from bolts. Like, all of our combo stuff is clearly good because it was just good there. Stoneforge should be good if they have counter spells, but if they're Storm, we're probably cutting this package. Uh, pure Steels are fine. So I think... We're not even going to worry about that. We're just going to run back our, our main deck here. So we've got two sideboard games here. If we win either of them, we get to go 5-0. and oh, So very exciting stuff here. Uh, okay, this hand's a little... They kept their 7. Uh, this hand's a little stinkier than our last hand. I do like the Giver of Runes. But we are going to mulligan. That's what our deck does. And we found a quest, so we'll keep. Put the sword on the bottom. As good as the sword is, like, I'm, I'm happy to keep a three lander here. I believe. I'd rather keep the third land than keep the three mana sword. And obviously, I want both the creatures and I want the quest. That might be wrong. Maybe I did want the sword. Maybe the third land is a little too much. Ah, eh, battle skill. Okay, that's kind of halfway there so let's cast quest and let our opponent have a turn back they'll probably be relieved to see that there are no ornithopters or memnites coming down just yet serum visions sure so we've seen opt and serum visions from them so we know they like to look at cards and draw them oh an island what's this going to be another serum visions yep our opponent certainly likes looking at the cards in their deck we can guarantee that much. And. Alright, just back to us. Awesome. Another pure seal. I won't say no to that. This lets us double spell next turn. So we cast a pure seal here. Next time we can cast a pure seal on a Thraben Inspector. And then we just. Uh, well, still two creatures off, I guess. But we're on our way to getting this quest going. And if they are a slow blue control deck, having two pure steels in play and eventually getting to resolve this battle skill is going to be awesome. Okay, here's the steam vents. Yep, lightning bolt. Okay. I'm really thinking this is like... Surgical, my pure steel. I mean, that worked out really great for them because I have one in hand, but... That's still odd. Alright. So, yeah, I'm thinking this is like a blue moon style deck, like a blue red control deck. Well, that's a sick draw, so I'm just going to play this into counter magic. I don't really mind. If they counter this, I guess play Thraven Spectre and draw off the clue. Yep, they've got a counter spell. Remand, okay, that's... That's awesome. Because I still get a quest on my quest for the Holy Relic. And I get to just try this again next turn. Okay. Things are looking pretty decent. Uh, if I get to get quest off, I am probably... Probably not going for Argentum Armor this late in the game. I'm probably just going to go for Sword of Fire and Ice. Because... Any creature I can play and just try and equip it to my opponent has to immediately deal with. Yep. Uh, we drew the land, which is fine. Play the Stoneforge. Our opponent has to interact with the Stoneforge. If they're a man, I get to replay, which maybe means I shouldn't have played the land out yet. Uh, okay, so this Stoneforge... Yeah, this Stoneforge is just going to get the sword and the quest can get the Argentum Armor. That's fine. Let's draw a card. Hoping to find a zero-drop creature. And we whiffed. But, like, next turn we just get to try and do the thing anyway. Uh, we're not going to attack with our Thraben Inspector here because we might need it to wear the Argentum Armor. Uh, 
Are they gonna? Oh, are they gonna? They could Arc Mage Charm still quest here, which the quest doesn't do anything for them, but taking away from me is still very good for them. Snap. Snap opt. Yeah, that's fine. Snap bolt. Snap bolt. Bolt the stone forge. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Sure, sure, sure. So next turn's going to be interesting. I apparently can't have too many tricks left up their sleeve, surely. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good opponent. Yeah, your snap cars can get in. That's fine. I'm not scared of dying to combat damage anytime soon. Uh, okay, this is interesting. We're going to play this quest. And I'm going to play this Stoneforge. Yes, we'll use quest. No, we'll not use Stoneforge. Uh, yeah, we'll get in. I was worried last time about like a Snapcast or something coming down and eating my Thraven Inspector, so... With one mana up, the worst they can do is Lightning Bolt it, which... They kind of need to save Lightning Bolt for the Stoneforge. But, uh, seeing that they're the controlling style, I honestly want to bring in more equipment just to have... A lot of things to fire with my Stoneforges and put into play, so I'm probably... Going to be cutting four of my zero drops to bring in some number of equipment. They snap cast a, I don't know, cryptic, bounce my quest again. Yeah. Maybe bounce the stone forge so they, well, they can't counter it on the way back down, I guess. Yeah, okay, bounce stone forge, that's fine. I mean, I still actually feel pretty far ahead in this game. The fact that I've got a quest in play still. And, like, them bouncing my Stoneforge means I just get to cast it again. Oh, another Glinthawk. I would love to find a, a zero drop artifact creature. Because we'd actually have an active a quest going off right now. So I've got a few options here. I think just playing out the Stone Forge again is the best. Uh, I have the option here of playing out the two Glenhawks, just letting them die to put this up to four, but honestly I'll save that for a turn where it puts it to five instead. Uh, we're not interested in attacking here. Again, I want to leave the most amount of creatures in play to have them potentially wear an equipment. They're immediately fetching with Scalding Tarn, so they might have Mystic Sanctuary to put... No? Okay, they just... Yep. Oh yeah, they just want to shuffle straight away so that they don't ruin their scries, I guess. It's an opt. What have you got for me, opponent? These Snapcasters can 100% get in. I am so fine with that. Not blocking. I'm not too scared of dying from 12. I mean, all of these snapcasters get in once more if they really want to. Okay, Ornithopter. That's a good draw. Let's play that. My opponent's thinking on this. Yes, I would like to use quest ability. Cast a Glenhawk. Yes, use quest for the Holy Relic's ability. Yep, I will return my Ornithopter. And I'll play my Ornithopter. Hmm. 
Yes, I'll use quest ability once more. So it's on five, so our opponents let it get to five. Okay, we're in beginning of combat, so let's activate this now. Get our Gentamama. Equip to Thraven Inspector. Do we get to declare attackers? Are they going to Cryptic Bounce something? No, okay. So we get to attack. Okay. Uh, let's destroy Steam Vents. Let's try and take them off Red Mana because this Field of Ruin can't target us at all because we have no non-basics. Okay, sure, you've got a Red Mana. And they can't block, so they take 7 down to 7. Uh, and now we will play this Glenhawk. Sure. And we will yield through the turn because we want this Stoneforge to deploy a Batter Skull. Alright, another basic mount from our opponent. So I was taking off the, taking them off red isn't panning it too great here. So maybe I should have taken them off a snapcaster to make sure that they can't like cryptic tap my team here and use a bunch of bolts to kill me. But I think that's I mean if they were able to do something like that, they would have needed like another snapcaster to bolt snap bolt, which means they would have had to do it in my last turn. So I think we're looking pretty okay here. All right, here we go. They're paying costs. They're casting something. Oh, they've stopped paying for costs, I think. What could they have? So, Archmage's Charm, two silver, Thraben Inspector would be really good. Shattering Spree. Okay, so they're destroying the Ornithopter as well. That's fine. So you're going to destroy our Gentle Mama and Ornithopter. That's very fine. I mean, I'd rather they didn't, but I think we still win the game here. So I'll let them attack. If they wish to. No. Okay, end step. We'll activate Stoneforge. Uh, and we'll put the Battle Skull into play. Okay, let's activate Stoneforge so that they can't counter this. Put Sword of Fire and Ice into play. Equip to... Let's equip Batter Skull. See what they want to do about this. I mean, maybe I want to equip Glenhawk, but what is this cryptic bounce something? Return the battle skull, sure. Okay. Um So they've got two cards left in hand. At this point, my Thrave Inspector is going to block a Snapcaster if they give me that option. But, uh, so they're on fives. The next turn, I get to attempt to equip this sword to literally anyone. If they kill them, then I equip to someone else, and it's still really good. Okay, so they're fetching down to four. Getting another basic island. And we win the match. Awesome. Uh... We will do the post-league wrap-up in just a moment, so join us for that. All right, here we go, guys. So the post-league wrap-up, we uh, 
we went five and oh who to thunk it that was that was awesome uh we didn't feel too punished by having these fetches over horizon lands like i said i could see testing more fetches but the times we flooded was when we got to do cool stuff with our equipment which is what this deck can do but more often than not our opponent gets to roll us over with value when we get to that point uh Memnites and Orthobs were superstars. Again, in any grinding matchup, I'll cut one of these play sets, depending on whether the flying is important or the power is important. So depending on whether they, I need to get around their blockers or whether they have no creatures and I can just get in for one on the Natch. I mean, the deck the deck revolves around this card. Obviously great. Glidhawks performed really well. They gave us a nice aggro plan as well. Skyfishers. We didn't see any other tricksy stuff with them too much, like bouncing through, but inspectors to make more clues in grindy matchups. Uh, we did see a t one where we got to bounce a land to just replay. Again, there are scenarios where if we had like four mana, six mana kind of thing, we could play a Skyfisher and keep bouncing and replaying to get quest triggers because it can bounce itself. Thraben inspectors have always impressed me in this deck. They did fantastic. Giver of Runes actually didn't show up today, really. It let us do some blocking and stuff, but but you know, it's it's mostly that we didn't draw it. It's not like its effects aren't good. It is a very good card in this deck. Stoneforge did incredibly. Very happy with the Stoneforge as being legal in modern now. They they do wonders for this deck. Martyr's Souls, they they were beat six in some games. They were fantastic. Free when you need them, five fours when you need them. We're good. Jenna Mama, as always, does a fantastic job. Battle Skull being the best Stoneforge target does a great job. Sword of Fire Ice did feel like it was a nice bridge between the two. It was a good secondary Stoneforge target and a good secondary quest target. And Pure Steel Paladins in the main. So they ate a Surgical from, from an opponent, which was interesting. I would have thought our opponent would have waited for like a quest to get popped or something, but yeah, they, they Surgical Pure Seals and kind of weird but i think we still won that game or at least we still won the match so yeah they, they had some some cool turns where they let us draw a bunch of cards by getting quests off they let us re-equip you know after our opponents interact with our staff uh, i was worried about them being two drops but that actually hasn't hurt us too much maybe the maybe the place that's too many maybe i could cut one for like an 18th land and then go up to like eight fetches or something not sure but yeah the main deck did work like we we had some really good combo hands in that that pseudo league. Uh, the sideboard, Canonus. These are like Dambixes and Sun and Moon, you know, where you don't often need them, but the matches where you need them for, you kind of want this effect in the sideboard. They were fine. Uh, also just nice to bring in. They're an artifact, so like an extra target to bounce with Glen Hawk, especially in those matchups where we're cutting like some of these or whatever. Containment Priests never, were never relevant. I... I don't think I ever mentioned them in any of my sideboarding thoughts, but they were never relevant. Um, but I think, again, like, the matchups we're going to lose to, uh, I think our mid-range matchup against, like, the Control decks and the Jund decks of the world aren't that bad. I think Pure Seal Paladin does a lot of work in those and be able to bring in, like, more equipments and stuff and play out a long grindy game works in our favor. I think what we're scared of is fast combo and big mana decks. So fast combo containment priest is obviously really good against if they're like trying to cheat in emeralds or whatever. I think there's just a necessary slot we have to fill. Uh, paths were good. There were times where I liked bringing in a lot of them. Times where they weren't as necessary, but again, I think this is a necessarily necessary evil for our sideboard. We actually don't have a lot of. Uh, we can't afford to make too many changes during sideboarding times where we do it's like we're asking a combo deck so we cut you know maybe all of these maybe all of these something like that and get to bring in all of these against grindy like creature matchups we get to bring in these and like cut one of these play sets or something or potentially like cut this play set or something like that uh doesn't and fragmentize again there were matchups where i felt like i needed that kind of effect and i still can't decide which of these is better like whether i just want to run one of these two or run two copies of one of them and none of the other I still can't decide, so I'm still going to stick with the split. Uh, War and Peace is a card I want for the Path to Exile matchup, so I think I like keeping that in. Feast and Famine for the Fatal Push matchups. I think they're both very good. Um, and the Colossus Hammer, like I said, I'm not 
I'm not as sold on the Colossus Hammer. I think I like bringing in with Pure Steel Paladins when I need to versus other fast combo decks, and it's like a different kind of fast game plan, but maybe for next league, I think... I think I would like to test my one of Leyline of Sanctity in that slot instead. But yeah, so that was the league. We got a nice 5 0. If you enjoyed, make sure to chuck us a comment, let us know what you think. If there's other stuff you think I could test in this list, make sure to let me know. Uh, I was honestly going to, to test a blue splash in this for my next video, but because this did so well, I might actually run this back through another pseudo league with the that one change there. So. If you want to see the blue splash instead, let me know in the comments. And hope you enjoyed. It's our first 5-0. Thanks, guys, and buzzy buzzy.